Hey everyone, Laura here. Tanya here. We've been friends for over a decade and worked together for a long time in call centers as agents, quality analysts, managers, and supervisors. In 2018, we started up this podcast to talk about the batshit bonkers bullshit we see and continue to see in our time at work and at home as consumers. We also share your stories as both consumers and as employees. So keep them coming to Q as in cucumber at yahoo.com. We host the show anonymously and use aliases. In the stories we tell, we change names and identifying details of people, locations, and companies. We also share your emails anonymously, so any similarities to real people, locations, or companies is purely coincidental. So if you think we're talking about you, guilty conscience much? Now on with the fun. Love your faces. Smooches. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. This job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking customers. We're always this stupid. It is you take lessons. Just calm down. Oh, fuck you. You can't handle the truth. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. In other words, be nice, asshole. So, Continue. So we go in, get my blood work done. Get the, oh, they, they get my fucking needle. They get me started. And so in order, so my port is like this little round thing that's got like these. The only way I can explain it is little claws. And there's a tube that runs out of it into like a vein or an artery or whatever. Uh-huh. And this is how they draw my blood. This is how they inject dyes into me. This is how they give me my chemo. This is how they do everything, they do everything through my port so I don't have to get stuck four million times because when I first got diagnosed, I looked like a fucking junkie. Oh, I know. So. In doing all that Theranos research mm-hmm. that I did, they talked about, there was a lady in the show that was like, she was a breast cancer survivor and she was like, once a cancer patient, always a cancer patient. Right. And you get your blood drawn and you are poked and prodded more than you will possibly so, imagine. So when the Theranos like testing thing, yeah. that was just like a godsend to those people because yeah. they were like uh, that would I mean uh, I can't even tell you like from the August hope 9th that from, that would have given you from August 9th until I got until I was okay to use my port which was probably the beginning of September. Um, because I got my, I, well, no, I got my port like on August 16th or something like that. Mm-hmm. Within a week, I had my port. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I couldn't get it until I healed and everything. So it was a couple of weeks. So it was like almost September before I could actually use my port. So from the time I got diagnosed until I was able to use my port, I was going to the doctor. I mean, I had like... I was full of like band aids. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I had shit everywhere. So the port is like, ha! Huh, they even give you some numbing cream to put on it. So before you get blood drawn, right? I don't even use it though because it doesn't hurt. It's like a little pinch and you're done. Last week I went to Plus go. Plus it was fucking up your shirts. You yeah, man, it was getting too. all over my shirt. I'm not messing up my clothes. <laughs> um, so I may have cancer, but it doesn't mean I can't look like a great. <laughs> Fabulous ass bitch. Right. That is the Tanya motto. Like that is right. the Tanya statement right there. Oh, right. I'm not gonna, you're not gonna have me now. There are some days when I look like a total fucking wreck. Wow. Well, but you know, I it's to be expected. Yeah, yeah, like Friday through Monday I look like bullshit because I get my chemo on Wednesdays. Even Wonder Woman has bad days. You know, I just look like I look I look like a fart. That's the only <laughs> thing I can think of. It just looks like a fucking dusty fart. <laughs> um so I go last week and my blood work done because we were going to record last week. Mm-hmm. I ended up, my blood draw takes, because I have an appointment every week and I'm in and out in like 10 minutes. I go in, I see the lady. Um, she's so cool. I love her, Vivi. She's just fucking awesome. She walks in, you walk into her office and she's like, hello, my love. And she knows your fucking birthday already. She knows everything. Aww. She slaps a wristband on you, chit chats, and you are on your way to go get whatever you got to get done. Aww. She's fucking awesome. All those nurses and everything back there are. So I get back there, and the girl does my port. She she accesses my port, puts the needle in. Hey, do the little thing. They don't get any blood return. She's like, oh, maybe I have it wrong. I said, well, it doesn't hurt, and I can taste the, the stuff. So the heparin. And I was like, she was like, but no blood's coming out, so let's try it again. So they try it again. 
Still no blood return. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck? So she's like, okay, stand up. I stand up. No blood return. Put your arms above your head and wave them around. <laughs> I'm like, okay. She's like, bend over. I had to lay down. Put your legs up in the air and bend down. And Are like, you? Fu- is this like fuck with cancer? A fucked up version of Simon Says for Right, like I'm doing patients. a goddamn cancer hokey pokey over here. <laughs> so she's like, I don't know. I can't get it. So she goes to get somebody else. The next nurse comes in. She has me do the fucking cancer hokey pokey again. I'm stand up. Sit down. Wave your arms around like you just don't care. I'm doing all this. She's like, ah, oh, yeah, we need to do the, the um, liquid drink know on you i was like what the what? fuck so on my port so my port you felt that it's round and it's got like these little metal claws that sticks into your body yeah. and then there's a like a catheter tube and that goes to the vein or artery or whatever and that's how they give you your chemo so <laughs> so apparently on that little catheter part sometimes a little sheath of skin will go up against the hole in it and it won't allow them to draw anything out. They can push stuff through, but they can't draw anything out. And part of doing a blood draw and everything else, they have to draw some out first and then okay. take the other blood, right? right? So that little sheath of skin now has grown up against the, um, the, the hole in the catheter part of my port. So you got to put this shit in there. So they put this stuff in there. They got me hooked up to this little this little syringe and it's got this stuff in it like liquid Drano and it takes like two, three hours at the least. Right, because that's what you messaged me like this is going to take like two hours Yeah, so, we'll so just have to skip yeah, it. Yeah, so I'm like laying like, down. I guess that's the priority then recording with uh, yeah, you, Sonia. Yeah, so a little bit, a little bit, just a skosh. Just a skosh. So yeah, so it took a few hours finally and then I had to see another doctor and then I had to go see my primary oncologist and she was just like, you know, you're just so problematic, Tanya. <laughs> and she's very, my my the doctor that I see every week my oncologist, she's 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 the best. She's the fucking best. Um, she's very. Um, how can I put this? Um, business, very businessy. You know, mm-hmm. like it's like she doesn't let because she knows that we're just fucking dying. I'm letting you fucking people poison me. You're half killing me every week. So that you can get me better. So she's like, no nonsense, matter of fact. Very, very like, um, you know, there's a wall. There's a wall. But when I went in the other day, she was like, you're just so problematic. I was like, I know. She was like, <laughs> I know. She was like, and you keep having reactions to the. It's a weird shit. To the, um, to the chemo. Yeah. At first they thought it was a steroid they gave me right before they gave me the chemo, and it's actually the chemo. So I'm on an hour drip. You can either do an hour drip or a three hour drip. She has me oh, on an hour drip. God. They have to slow it down to a two hour drip because if they do it in an hour, I can't breathe. Oh my like, god. Like I start getting red and I can't breathe and everything else. So they have to slow it down to a two hour drip. So like when I got my first one of um fucking chemo brain the one i'm on now it starts with a t tamoxin or something like that um um i kept calling it tamaguchi i don't know what the fuck that's i don't know um so this one <laughs> xenu zorba <laughs> all right whatever i don't know if you can blame that on chemo brain <laughs> right that's, that's just, just me Tanya. <laughs> um so the first time they gave it to me i i had another reaction like i had the first time they gave me the ac where i turned red and i broke out and I was like couldn't breathe and mm-hmm. having kidney pain and everything else so second week comes along and they're like okay we're gonna slow it down again they didn't slow it down enough mm-hmm. so I had another reaction so last week my nurse was like I'm not taking any fucking chances I'm giving you Ativan and I'm giving you Benadryl because I was like what do I need the Benadryl for I don't need it anymore and they were like no because the doctor before was like eh. she was like you know we're just gonna keep you on the Ativan and skip the skip the Benadryl well now she's like no you're getting the Ativan and the Benadryl well here's the kicker about an hour before <laughs> oh, about no. an hour before I go to chemo I eat an edible <laughs> so oh my god so by the time they get done with all the rigmarole of getting me set up to get my chemo 
I'm good and high because now they've given me Advan, they've given me Benadryl, and I've eaten an edible of some sort, like a gummy or something, right? Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I'm in there getting my chemo just fucked off. (laughs) Just high as hell. Sometimes I go to sleep, sit over there and talk shit to David. Last week I had to go get me an egg sandwich from the thing because last week all I could eat was eggs. So uh, it's just, I mean... I. Yeah, it's retarded. It's so retarded. So between, you know, getting my my drain clogged and having reactions every time I turn around and my feet hurt, my hands hurt. Mm. I got a fucking rash on my hands. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I'm just a fucking mess. Yesterday, my gums were hurting. Oh, my God. Super bad. I was like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And they, you have to be really careful of mouth sores. Yeah. So I was like all day long with the biotin and stuff and just rinsing my mouth out all Did day. Did you get any of those lozenge thingies? Uh, no, huh? because it, it's not... It, nothing. It's just not working. No, yeah. no. Huh? It's nothing. Is nothing. It's. I still just... think you should go on Amazon and research. There gotta be more products out there than just the biotin like yeah. things you can try. Well, I also have these little um, these little packets of this biotin. It's like this gel, and you rub it all in your mouth. Oh, I've got the gel. Yeah, and so I use that and everything. So it's helping. It's helping a lot. Um, but and it's not like because that the one I was on was so strong, mm-hmm. the one I was the two well the two I was on before were so strong. That's why I was having so many problems. Yeah. So the only issue with this one is like the weird rash. My feet hurt. I have absolutely no appetite. Like yeah. um, today I had some crackers and I feel like I ate a whole fucking five course dinner. Um, yeah, off of some crackers, and I really wanted some coffee, so I stopped at Seven Eleven and got coffee. Just, you know. See, Tanya sits here and she runs me through, like, all the shit. (laughs) And then I think about, like, the fact I feel like absolute ass today. And I'm like, it's kind of like somebody being like, I have terminal, like, I am terminal level AIDS. And I'm like, I stubbed my toe. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what, though? Like, the other day, Grandma Ewan said, she was like, I feel so bad whenever I complain because my hands hurt because she's starting to get arthritis and stuff. Right. And I was like, um, why would you feel bad? You have a fucking ache. Like, it fucking hurts. Yeah. She's like, yeah, but then I see you sitting over here and, and, you know, you're bald and you're wrapped up in a heating blanket and you can't hardly walk today, you know, yeah. because of the bone pain. And I was like, uh, but you're up, like, making orange cranberry bread because you want something to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, you grandma. You know, yeah, you know, I mean, it, I said, well, you have aches. I have aches right now. I, I don't know. I, well, it is what it is. I've been for years I've been on this this pain management medication that was not a narcotic because uh-huh. they were getting they got me off the Vicodin and the Tramadol yeah. which I'd been on for years. A few years ago I got off of it. Well, for some fucking reason out of nowhere all of a sudden I take the medicine and the next thing you know my whole body is like I I have tremors. Oh my god! My whole body. That's not good. Like you know that feel, and this is the way I equate it. You know that feeling where like it's been a while since you've eaten and you're having like a mm-hmm. low blood sugar yeah. moment. Imagine that, but no matter how much you fucking eat, you still feel that way. Yeah, for yeah. hours. Yeah, no, I feel like hours that quite. <laughs> and a- I'm like, what the. F- Fuck yeah, is no. fucking it's like, wrong with so, me. So, funny thing. So, um, it's almost like I don't have diabetes right now. No shit. No fucking shit. Wow. My blood sugar is like 80. I mean, though I think the most it's been in the last couple month or so is like 110, which is... Well, well I... Yeah, and, but then I get like, I can't eat. I right. cannot eat. So then it dips down really low. And and I get that same feeling where I'm shaky, I have a half ass headache, I feel cold, I feel nauseous, everything. Yep. And I don't know if it's because I'm fucking cancer sick or if I'm diabetes sick or if... Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? It's yeah. just, I mean, it was so bad the other day. I went to urgent care. Oh my God. Because I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. Like, did they check your blood sugar? They checked my blood sugar. It was fine. They did a whole bunch of blood work. They could not find jack wrong with me. But they were like, okay... We will give you, basically, just to kind of calm down my my nervous system, they gave me Valium. Oh, fucking Valium. I used to be on Valium. But here's the problem. (laughs) 
<laughs> but here's the problem. I don't think they realized that the medication that I am on and Valium don't do not mix. mix. Oh, God. And Ugh. I looked it up. Because I've run into situations before where doctors and pharmacists just aren't paying attention. And they just yeah. give you shit. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, well, I can't take this. So I call the doctor. And the doctor's like, my doctor on Monday. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, well, here's what I want you to do. He leaves, her, his nurse leaves me this message. And I'm like, what the fuck does that have to do with this? Right? She's like, oh, because I'm on blood pressure medication for the heart attack thing. Mm-hmm. Right? She's like, she leaves me a message. Hey, double up on your blood pressure medication. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Fucking, you know. What does that have to do with anything? So I call back. It takes me 30 minutes trying to get through all the layers upon layers Mm -hmm. upon layers of people to, if you don't pick up the phone, if you miss that call from the doctor's office, it is a fucking nightmare getting back to that person. So it took me fucking forever. I finally get a hold of her. I'm like, can you explain this? What the fuck does this have to do with anything? Right? I'm like, I feel like shit. I am in pain, but if I take it, I'm shaking and I can't function. Right. Help me with a solution more than here in one that makes no sense. Right. And she's like, well, it's a beta blocker. So it, sh- it, you, it sometimes helps with tremors. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, great. This morning, I doubled up on it. Took my, I took half of my normal pain meds, mm-hmm. right? Thinking, okay, yeah. nope. Shaken and feel like absolute fucking horseshit. Weird. And I got it got so bad right before you got here about an hour ago. I said fuck it and took the value. I don't care if it kills me at this point. I can't fucking function. No, no, I get it. What do I need to do? Like I can't sit here. I'm. I mean, literally, I'm standing in place, and all of a sudden, I'm shaking so bad, my knees gave out. I literally was standing in this office, and my knees just gave out. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? So I'm going to have to go in and get seen because I just, I can't. I just can't. I I am, you know what? I am. This feels like we're turning into the old lady broken podcast. (laughs) I know. The broken old lady podcast. I am so fucking over going to the doctor. (laughs) If I never go to another fucking doctor again, I think I'll be quite all right. Really, I I am so fucking sick of it. So I have three doctor's appointments a week. I see when I, I get my blood work done, see my oncologist, and then I go to um, chemo. And then I have some weeks, like in a few weeks, where I'll have more than that because I have to go see the cardiologist because apparently some of this chemo can make your heart weak. And when I first got diagnosed with cancer, I'd really, my blood pressure was through the fucking roof. But I can't imagine fucking why. Oh, no. That's I can't a, imagine why. So they put me on high blood pressure medicine. That's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. I was like, am I even, my doctor was like, you've never had high blood pressure before. I was like, I know. She was like, well, you've also never had cancer before. I was like, they're <laughs> freaking me the fuck out. Like, I don't know what to do. And then in a couple of weeks, I have to go see my my surgical oncologist and my my reconstructive surgeon and yeah. the OBGYN oncologist. So that we can get everything straight and get my surgery date set. So I'll find out on December 9th when I'm getting the boobs taken off. There you wow. Go. So. All right. Yeah. Well, by the way, welcome <sighs> to Q is in Cucumber. I'm Laura Mack. I'm Tanya Edwards. All right. So that was Tanya's health update. <laughs> That uh, rant. I know. <laughs> a couple of things real quick. Um, later, I believe if I can get this all done today, I am going to be putting out part one of the deep dive that Jessica and I did. Oh. Ho, ho. For uh, the Parent Memoirs podcast, one of our listeners emailed us and was like, I like the deep dives you do on Cues and Cucumber. I think you should do a deep dive on the Parent Memoirs. And she suggested... Diving in to the Casey Anthony. <gasps> oh my God, that gives me goosebumps. I can't stand that little bitch because when I was in Florida, I was looking for that whore. Oh, so- <laughs> I, was, I was on the lookout for that little bitch everywhere I went. Let me find her. I will drown her ass in a, a fucking swamp. I can't stand that her is ass. A fucked off. Story. I just saw some article where she said she was going to have kids. She wants to have kids. Bitch, every, you don't need a pet hamster, much less another every fucking kid. Every year she pops out. Every year it's an attention thing. I'm telling you, I don't think she'll ever do it. Jessica and I have 
had a whole discussion at the end of our deep dive where we were actually debating whether she would or wouldn't have kids again. But we recorded a giant recording. I'm going to, uh, I have to, I've edited the first episode. I just need to, to put some finishing touches on it. And then it's going to go out. And also I've decided, I say in the episode that I've decided that for all of the deep dives that we do, I'm just going to share them on both shows uh-huh. because they're they're super fun. And yeah. honestly, it just is what it is. But speaking of the deep dives. And I got caught up watching that fucking Scientology shit again. Oh. I meant to record it again, but I just got caught up watching that shit again. It's crazy. I'm like a fucking zombie sitting there at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> watching it because I can't fucking sleep. So something about the deep dives. I thought this was interesting. We got an email from our first fan, uh-huh. Roxy. 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 We haven't heard from you in a while. Oh no, we've heard from Roxy. She emails all the time oh. asking us questions. Asking specifically in the last few weeks, she's like just just tell me. Just tell me first. Like, basically what she asked me was, I don't want to wait for the show to see if there's a Tanya Health update as your first fan. Can you just <laughs> let me know? Like, she literally asked Roxy, me. Roxy, <laughs> if you would like, you can email me. I'll give or you her. I'll, yeah, I'll shoot and, over Tanya's private email. Yeah, okay. and, 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 and you can email me. I, <laughs> I'm fine. I am so fucking grouchy. Like, yeah. I have the worst road rage. Oh, yeah. I... I want to fight people like fifty-seven times a day, mm-hmm. um, but I'm I'm You're fine. Good. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. So what Roxy sent over, and I thought this was she was right. Um, she was like, I think that over the next, because she caught on to the fact that we had said, you're going to have your reconstruction stuff in January. Uh-huh. She was like, right now is the perfect time for you to start doing like for me to start doing some heavy research for some deep dives Mm -hmm. for us to record so that over the course of however long your reconstruction is going to be going on because it's not like chemo where some days you feel good and some days you don't that's going to be a whole yeah they're saying like two two three weeks downtime yeah so she sent a list of books and scandals that I was like, oh, damn. Knew in general some of these, but some of them I was like, wait, what? Oh, my God. I had no idea. So I'm going to run through just four of them real quick because I thought they were interested. And if any of you guys hear me explain any of these and you're like, oh, I want to hear that one, we'll probably eventually do all of them. But Yeah, and if anybody has anything that uh, I can do while I'm sitting at home, doing this shit in a couple months because it's i mean you're gonna be bored i'm gonna be so bored because i'm not gonna be able to go anywhere for a while right um because they're already like hey my nurse navigator lady was like make sure you get like pajamas the button up make sure you get this this and this telling me all this stuff i got to do she was like get some books get some puzzles get something because you're not gonna be able to like run around all over the place you know as Mm -hmm. much as you've even tried to do now yeah so all right so the first one is called the spider network and it's the wild it's called the spider network the wild story of a math genius a gang of backstabbing bank bankers and one of the greatest scams in financial history this about donald trump no (laughs) (laughs) because that sounds like wouldn't (laughs) surprise not one damn bit the shoe fits all right In 2006, an oddball group of bankers, traders, and brokers from some of the largest financial institutions made a startling realization. LIBOR, the London Interbank Offer Rate, which determines the interest rate on trillions of loans worldwide, was set daily by a small group of easily manipulated administrators and that they could reap huge profits by nudging it fractions of a percent to suit their trading portfolios. Tom Hayes, a brilliant but troubled mathematician, became the linchpin of the wild alliance that included a prickly French trader nicknamed Gollum. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) My precious. I know. The broker, Abo, or Abu, I'm not sure which one that is, um, who liked to publicly strip naked when drinking... Uh a nervous 
Kazakh chicken farmer known as Durka Durka. Wait, wait, why do I feel like this would be a Guy Ritchie movie? I don't know. <laughs> it's gotta be. Right? <laughs> you make an excellent point. My God. A broker known as Village, short for Village Idiot. Oh, no. Who racked up a huge expense account, who racked up huge expense account bills, and an executive called Clumpy because of his patchwork hair loss. A bro- and a broker. This this whole cast of characters all sound like idiots, but okay. And a broker, uncreatively nicknamed Big Nose, who had once been a semi-professional boxer. This group generated incredible riches until it all unraveled in a spectacularly vicious, backstabbing fashion. That sounds like a, a really a interesting guy story. This is a Guy Ritchie movie. This is a straight up Guy Ritchie movie. It so really is. I'm, like, now, why am I picturing like Tom Hardy and um, what's his name, Gerard Dup- uh, What's his name, Gerard Butler, and fucking? I don't know. It's uh, like the what do you want to think? It's the Bank of a Rock and Roller Bank of America yes, edition. Yes, <laughs> Rock and Oh, I love that movie. I love Rock and Roller. It's a great movie. But Uncle, I want to be a I'm, Rock and Roller. Oh my god, I love that movie. I do too. I All right, to... so that one looks really interesting. Ooh. All right, this one, I'm telling you, Roxy is officially like our research department. <laughs> right? She went through and like scanned all these and sent me all the stuff up. that I was like, oh damn, look at you. Okay, so this one is called The Billion Dollar Whale. Um, the Billion Dollar, it's a little bit shorter, but it says The Billion Dollar Whale is an epic tale of white collar crime on a global scale, revealing how a young social climber from Malaysia pulled off one of the biggest heists in history. Hmm. Seems kind of interesting. It's like, okay. Hmm. So, okay, so have you ever seen that movie about um, who was on. What it was fucking on, really, but it was about uh, Versace's killer, and yes, okay, okay. So that guy mm-hmm. was fucking nuts, like oh, him yeah. and his dad. Like that's totally. that's kind of like you know, yeah. he was he was a fucking peasant in the Philippines and came over here like he was Mister Big Shit, and even had his son thinking you know all this stuff. So. Oh, maybe uh, the billion. Was it called the billion dollar well? Mm-hmm. Okay. This one now I remember during at the round of the time of the Enron thing, like exploding. There were a whole bunch of kind of corporate scandals at that time mm-hmm. that just all imploded the economy. It was WorldCom, and they they all got lumped in. If you you asked any financial person, they would give you a list, and this mm-hmm. was the list: Enron, Tyco. WorldCom, Global Crossing, and Comcast. Those were the scandals, right? And Comcast a bunch of fucking crooks anyways. Oh, God. Okay, so WorldCom was one. I didn't really know too much about it, but she came across this book of the whistleblower, uh-huh. right? And it says, WorldCom chief audit executive Cynthia Cooper stares at the entries in front of her. The more sinister... The, more she, the longer she stares, the more sinister they seem. But the CFO is badgering to delay her team's audit of the company's books and directing others to block Cooper's efforts. Still, something in the bit of pit of her stomach tells her to keep digging. Cooper takes readers behind the scene on a riveting real-time journey as she and her teams work at night and behind closed doors to expose the largest fraud in corporate history. Who can they trust? Could she lose her job? Should she fear for her physical safety? In extraordinary circumstances, she recounts for the first time her journey from her close family upbringing in small town Mississippi to being a working mom and corporate success, to the pressures of becoming a whistleblower, to being named one of Time's 2002 Persons of the Year. Oh. That's how, like, fucking important this lady was. She also provides a rare insider's glimpse into the spectacular rise and fall of WorldCom, a telecom titan, the darling of Wall Street, and a Cinderella story from Mississippi. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Damn good. Like, that seems fucking interesting. All right, and here's the last one. This one, and if you guys have preferences on these, shoot us some emails. 
Um, this one says, in January 2000, American Online and Time Warner announced the largest merger in U.S. history, a deal that would create the biggest media company in the world. It was celebrated as the, ma- as the marriage of new media and old media, a potent combination of the nation's number one internet company with the country's leading entertainment giant. The owner of such internationally renowned brands as Warner Brothers, HBO, CNN, and Time Magazine. But only three years later, nearly all of the top executives behind the merger had resigned. The company had lost tens of billions of dollars in market value, and the U.S. government had begun two investigations into its business dealings. How did the deal of the century become an epic disaster? Hmm. And that one is called, I think I forgot to say the actual title. It's called Stealing Time, the AOL and Time Warner story. Seems kind of like interesting. What's wrong? Nothing, no. I'm just trying to see. Oh, you're trying to find it? No, I'm trying to find the million dollar well. That one seems to be the one that you're most interested in. Yeah, just because... um, Seems interesting, right? Oh, the billion dollar well. Yeah. That's 20 bucks on Amazon. Let me see if I can get it cheaper. At, um, yeah. So those are all the, the stories that we're mm. considering. If there are preferences, let us know. But I wanted to thank Roxy... Thank you. Love you, girl. You're so awesome. Love your face. All right, so we got a couple of good stories. All right, so this one was titled Barfly GPS. <laughs> a couple of my boyfriends said that. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> You're stupid. Um, you know who you are, bitches. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, this is from Tracy Turnblad. Turnblad, <laughs> Tracy Turnblad. Don't you remember Tracy Turnblad yes, from Hairspray? From Hairspray. <laughs> I love that movie. I do too. Um, <laughs> I know. Ne- I never thought I would write into this show. I don't work in customer service or work with the general public anymore, but I enjoy the hell out of it, reminding me of the idiots roaming free in the world. However, fairly recently, I moved into a new house. I went through the hassle of getting utilities set up. Electric phone, propane, and water and sewer had no issues. But setting up the internet and cable was ridiculous. I nicknamed nicknamed my cable and internet provider One Finger. Hmm. One Finger. Because that is what they do. That is what they wave at all their customers. (laughs) I called and set up an appointment. No one showed up. And I heard nothing. I called them back, and they said that the tech had been there and the service was unavailable. Strange, as the house on both sides are connected and have the same service provider. They made another appointment. Same result, again with me having to call them. Again with the tech saying, nope, they checked. Can't give service in your area. (laughs) Again, I mentioned that the houses next to to mine have the exact same service. They made another appointment and it was ready for and I was ready for round three. At this point, Tracy has like she has reached her maximum capacity of fuck you. Okay? <laughs> Tracy has had enough at this point. I took the day off work and waited on the street in my car for from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. In your car. Good Tracy was like, fuck this. She did a stakeout on her own house. (laughs) She totally did. My husband gave me a couple of breaks. um, But other than that, sat there all day. My road is a dead end. And I'm two miles from the only entrance. So if a cable truck had come to my house, I absolutely would have seen it. No show again. No call again. The tech specifically still claimed that there's no way to get service at my house. (laughs) I went to their office in person the next day and explained what I had done. Apparently, the service trucks are equipped with GPS tracking features, and they called up the history of the tech's truck, thinking they would be able to prove me wrong. Interestingly, 
it seemed that the guy couldn't find my house at all. But he knew exactly where the local bar was down the street from my house. Oh, 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 okay. I'm not saying that he spent the time he was supposed to be getting my cable set up drinking, but I know he didn't park there and walk to my house either. He was called back to the office and fired. And as this story was sent to the cable service that suddenly was available after all. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's funny. That is uh, that's fucking... All... And here's the thing. We had that story the last time we recorded where we actually talked about, like, the GPS well, thing. Yeah. But... And that's the thing. She was like, I I never thought I'd write into the show, but then this happened. And I was like, damn, the girls just talked about this shit. Right. Like... Right. Yeah. Because and all of these companies have, like, they have GPS for everything. Like, on my way over here, David called me and said, hey, you know, so we're so country and ghetto. You know, those little cans that they sold that you put your bacon grease in? It has, like, the little strainer on it. Yeah. And the lid. Okay, we've been looking in every store. I can't find one. So we ordered one off of um, off of Amazon the other day. So David called me, and he was like, hey, go outside and get my get your bacon thing, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I'm not at home. He was like, oh, shit, I thought that was there, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no. But he already knew that, you know. That the bacon can, the bacon grease can, <laughs> was fucking dropped off. I We've mean, been they tr- sitting on just on top of our phones, waiting for the bacon grease <laughs> thing, people. You know what? Because right now I have it in a coffee cup, and it's gross. Yeah, so I really it need it to be in something because I use bacon grease like, you know, when I'm doing stuff. Oh, let me tell you. And then the other day I did such a fat girl thing. Okay, so we made, I made homemade tomato soup. I've never made it before, so I looked on the Pinterest, got the recipe, made homemade tomato soup. And then I decided to get some, like, that fancy bread, and I made grilled cheese sandwiches. So I went and got, like, sliced Gouda and sharp cheddar, and I got some tomatoes and avocados and fried up some bacon and all kinds of stuff, right? And instead of using butter to make my grilled cheese, I used bacon grease. And let me tell you, bitches, it was fucking phenomenal. It was goddamn great with my homemade tomato soup. We used to we used to do the same thing with the bacon grease in a in like a coffee cup, right? Yeah. Well, once we decided to stop doing that, we just like cleaned out the bacon grease and ran it through the dishwasher or whatever. Every single time you put coffee in that coffee cup. I'm sure cup. it tastes like bacon grease. Oh my god, it was it, it was atrocious. So finally my mother this was what was so funny, it made it worse. My mom at the time was coming and watching T J every day. Uh-huh. It was right after Grace died, right? Uh-huh. And She's like, I had gotten the, the coffee cup of grease, uh-huh. and I just threw it away. I was like, uh. But at the time, we were having problems with TJ just throwing shit in the trash uh-huh. for no reason. So my mom sees this coffee cup sitting <laughs> in the trash, and she's like, oh, it must have been a mistake. So she takes it out. And then she's, she's like, TJ, throw away a coffee cup. I'm like, no, I needed to throw that away. <laughs> and she was like, oh, you're just not washing it right, Laura. You know, because it's a terrible mom. Right. Next day, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put it right up front. So when she comes next time and comes to grab it, sure as fuck, she messaged me within like 45 minutes of me leaving the house. I got the bacon grease cup. <laughs> I know. Like, See? <laughs> God damn it. Oh, my God. All right. So this one was called A Simple Solution May com- may Cause More Complex Problems for the Stupid. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Our mall has recently been renovated. Most of the stores have closed, and the building has been turned into a strip mall. When the building, when the building was an indoor mall, we always had customers coming into our store to ask us questions about the mall in general or about other stores since our store was the closest to the entrance. So is this making sense so far as to yeah. what's happening here? Yeah. It was like an enclosed mall, but now they've just taken off the roof and... Yeah, and, you know, and it's, it's, it's a, a strip, strip mall, mall right? <gasps> Look at your dog. He busted in the window. Pete! <laughs> What the fuck is going on with your dog? He just broke into the house via the window. <laughs> oh, Pete. Seriously, dog. You are going to break your neck. Get out. Back up. Was there a screen there? Back. No, he knocked off the screen. Back 
Back up. Back. Oh, Pete, get up. Oh, is it? oh, oh! it's that lotion. Yeah, I just needed to open that up. It was kind of giving me a headache, so I opened it. That's Seriously, funny. dog. He... Good Christ. I'm glad we got pictures of that. <laughs> we all of a sudden look up. Because my, up? just to give y'all a clarification, my office, the downstairs of my house is like at garden level. It's not quite a basement. So my window, the ledge to my window is at ground level. So, and I have a window. So I'd cracked it open. I had put Pete out of the office, cracked it open to get some air in here. And then all of a sudden, Pete just walked right in, but then he's got nowhere to go because he can't. My easel is sitting up in and front of it. he's just like. And he can't jump down. So he's just standing there like he's peeking over at us. At can- he's peeking over my canvas, looking at us like. I looked little- over and I see Pete's little face. Huh? <laughs> Oh, the fuck? What? God damn, dog. Oh, my God. All right. So. Okay. Well, that's okay. Fine. So, break there. All right. Um, so, we thought after this conversion, we would finally be getting away from that. With the, we, we were expected to be experts on every fucking store in the mall. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, and now that every store has their own entrance and they don't have to walk through our store, we were thinking, great, life is grand. Of course, we were wrong. Here's a transaction that happens far too many times a day, every day, without fail. Customer one, how do I get to blah, blah, blah store? Me. It's just along the strip now with its own entrance. And the customer says, so it's gone? It's gone? That was stupid. No, there's, there's just no mall anymore. You just need to walk down there. And the, the customer says, no, but I need to get to blah, blah, blah store. And I said, yeah, it's just right down there, just like us. It's along the strip out front. <laughs> and it says, but they'll bring the mall back, right? Uh-uh. No, it's a strip mall now. Right, until they're done renovating. Why would you take off a roof to renovate? Like, I would a have whole just said, mall. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. No. Absolutely. See you um, in six months. <laughs> then, is it, then is it. So I responded, mm, no, they're, renova- they're renovating it to make it this. <laughs> I just can't stand people. Hold on, this is a good one. <sighs> Customer, I have an appointment at blah, blah, blah store, and now I can't get to it. I say, yes, you can. It's just out front, right in between blah, blah, blah store and blah, blah, blah store. It has its own outside entrance. The customer says, no, it doesn't. There's a fence around the doors. And I said, there's a fence around the old mall doors, but the store is farther down with its own entrance. And the customer's like, no, there's a fence around it. Not grasping, like... This door doesn't go anywhere now. The door that used to leave, like, okay, so imagine it's like a door that goes into JCPenney's, right? Right. You don't have to go into that JCPenney door anymore, right, to get to the rest of the mall. So they're trying to go to that JCPenney door to get to, like, Bath and Body Works or something. Exactly. But they can't. And they're just like, you just walk down there, assholes. Like, I don't understand how uh, stupid people are. This is, um, and the customer, hey, how am I supposed to get into the mall? And I say, you can't anymore. Every store has its own outside entrance. And it says, but there's a fence in front of the mall doors. I said, yeah, because they're doing construction to close up that door. There's a store going into that section right there. And the customer says, well, how do I get into the mall then? And I said, you can't. There is no mall. <laughs> and, and finally, this one, or there's two more. It says, um, so this is this store and this is X store and Y store together now? And I'm confused and say, no, nope, just our store. And the customer says, but the other store isn't in the mall anymore. So is it in here? And I said, no, it's just our store. The other store is 
further down. It has its own entrance. And the customer looks around and says, so I can't get to it from in here then? Said, no. Mm-mm. Like, uh. People are so stupid. This is the last one. <laughs> so we can't use that door anymore then, right? You know, I just don't understand why... <laughs> It's like you can use people. Is somebody at home tying your fucking shoes? Like, what are you? How do you leave your house every day and somehow manage to find your way back home without assistance? Right. Like, you people had kids, probably. And what kind of dumb shit are you teaching those little bastards? Oh, my God. (sighs) All right. This is a good one. Too stupid to breathe. Oh, no. (laughs) That's from. This is from. I like this. I'm one. supposed to do something right now. What is it? I know, right? <laughs> this is too funny. This is my favorite. This is from Carlotta, the Caramel Captain of Concord. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> You're super fan. Oh yeah. Um, the customer says, "Hey, I'm trying to place an order online, but it's asking me for the expiration date of my card, and I don't have that." And I said, "Okay." And the customer says, "So, can you place the order for me instead?" And I say, I'm sorry, I can't submit an order without an expiration date. And the customer says, not even if I give you the last four of my social? Can you look it up? I said, no, I don't have access to your credit card information. And the customer says very sarcastically then, I guess I'll just have to use a different credit card then. I say, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. And five minutes later, the customer calls back. And the customer says, I'm such a dummy. I ordered the wrong size. And I said, okay, did you figure out the card and the expiration date? And the customer says, yeah, I just made one up. Oh, my God. Bitch, have you checked your email? Right, because I'm pretty sure that order didn't go go through. through. Yeah, yeah. And now there's a fraud alert on your card. So she's calling, saying, hey, can you change the side? The size? So now they gotta start this whole thing all over again. All fucking over again. I got a call the other day. Me and David went to Sam's, and it's, uh, I so I answer it, and and it was some automated thing saying how um, my card could have possibly been compromised, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, shit. So I pressed one, and the little guy comes on, and he's like, thank you so much for holding it. And he's telling me everything, and he's like, and your card could have possibly been compromised. And I was like, okay, which card? And he was like, well, which card do you have? I said, uh, um, I have a few different cards. Which card is it? Well, I, I said, so who are you calling from? Mm-hmm. Well, I represent a lot of different cards. Ba- no. No, you know, I said, no. um, no, uh-uh, no, no, no. He was like, well, tell me what cards you have. I said, no, tell me my name. If this is my credit card company, you should know my you'll name. know my name and which card you're calling about. Well, we handled this card, this card, da 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 I was like, no, okay, but... Don't. Hmm, thanks so much. Bye bye now. No. Well, your card is compromised. No, Which one? It's not. Which one? Which one? You would have basic information. Yeah, no, because the last time one of my cards got compromised, because apparently I bought a ticket to Vietnam. Uh- <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's on Ta- Tanya's priority list <laughs> right, for today. Right, I'm going to fucking Vietnam. Trip to Vietnam. Um, I got a text message saying, Did you make this charge? And I said, no. And it was like, okay, call us right now. So I called, and they were like, yeah, there was a charge for this match money for a trip. And what was funny was they tried to get the card, to, the charge to go through, and it was like $1,400 more than what is on my credit line. Right. So, of course, it wasn't going to go through. Of course not. But they still flagged it, and they were just like, they were just like, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because most of the time, you would know what your credit line is. Right. That's if I have a thousand dollar credit line, I'm not going to. Number two, that's a highly unusual purchase for you. And I had never even used that card before. Good I had just Lord. gotten it. Yeah. So. Good Lord. Yeah. All right. So this one's kind of funny. It says, "Little boys and their junk." Oh. It says, "I work at a customer service. Uh, I work at customer service for a gaming console, and we get a fairly large number of prank calls every day." And this is how we respond, <laughs> which apparently, and there was a whole bunch of like explanation in this email about how they're kind of allowed to do this. Like once you know it's a prank call, uh-huh. fuck with them to get this to stop. Like huh. go away, right? Because um, if you don't, it's just going to keep happening. Right, right. 
<laughs> and it seems like everybody else has got the same goddamn idea. And I say, thank you for calling customer service. What can I help you with? A kid says, hi, I got my penis stuck in the disc tray. This kid, it sounds about 13. His friends are giggling in the background. And I say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We definitely don't recommend inserting tiny objects into the drive. <laughs> I can hear his friends cracking up. The kid, dumbfounded, screams in tears. It's not small. <laughs> You little fucker. <laughs> you deserve that. <laughs> well, so at Schmuckies, oh, we get, God. you know, it's food. So we get right. a lot of prank oh, calls. Oh, I'm sure. And we, one of our bigger contracts is a Chinese restaurant. Mm-hmm. And people call up, oh, do you have dog? Ha, 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 ha. Oh, you God. know. So I have a few agents that are just oh, like. Oh, my God. You need to talk about that. Um I'm going to write that down. Hold on. So okay. have a few agents. Yeah, so Sorry. we have a few agents that fuck with them the whole time. They're like, yeah, did you want, you know, a schnauzer? Did you want blah, blah, blah? And we can stir fry it. We can sweet and sour. We can velvet it. We can do this. We can do, you know, just fuck with them the whole time. And then you can hear them in the background just cracking up. Yeah, well, I'll have some some sweet and sour, this and da, da, da you know. And you're like, yeah, okay. I tell you what, you little asshole. You know, <laughs> I'm going to call your mom. I have your mom's phone number right here, so I'm going to call your mom real quick Thank you. and see if she really wants the sweet and sour doc sound or whatever you know talk about because you messaged me about this and because you were like what the fuck but you even didn't know it was a prank but then i started googling it oh, do you remember yeah. that that was about the bones the bone fries or something like the pizza it's bones pizza bones pizza bones yeah so somebody so a couple of our contracts are with pizza places and people kept calling up and asking for pizza bones. Like, it, like pe they kept asking, like, I need that, the pizza boneless. Yeah, I need the pizza boneless or whatever. And we couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. We're losing our shit. We're running around because these We're agents like, are like, I keep getting a call. They say they want the pizza boneless. And I was like, fuck you. The pizza's boneless. There's no putting chicken wings. I mean, what are you, out? what are you talking about? What are you, fuck, hang up. It's a goddamn prank. Like, I was just getting. <laughs> so she's messaging me, and I'm like, what? So I start Googling shit, and I'm like, oh, fuck. It's like an internet, like, yeah, it's, it's like the sort of, ice bucket challenge yeah, bullshit. Of just, like, call up and ask if pizza has bones. bones or some yeah, stupid. some kind of bullshit. And honestly, we're probably even getting the details of that wrong. But it was just like, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. I kept, I kept telling my agent, just hang up. Tell them, okay, yeah, that's funny. And hang up. Thanks so much for calling. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, because they were, they were freaking out. So my agents were just freaking out because they were like, do we have a boneless pizza? Like, they just kept looking at me like... Is like, there, uh, uh, Tanya, is there a boneless pizza on the menu? The fuck no! Well, Have you ever had bones on your pizza, stupid? Well, Hang up. In all defense, <laughs> let's think about some weird food products, like bacon -aise. Yeah. Like bacon yeah. mayonnaise? Come on. Yeah, what is the other one with the ketchup and the ranch? Cranch or whatever it's called? Cranch. Or whatever Ew. it's called. Oh, yeah. God. All right. So, this, one's, this is the last one. And then we have... Our story that one of our old coworkers asked us to talk about. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to save the the other ones for for another time. Um, it says a name that just rolls off the tongue. Um, I take inbound calls, and this is a super short one. I love it. It says I take inbound calls for a national cell phone company in customer service. Oh, I say thank you for calling blah 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 company. My name is blah blah blah. How can I help you today? The customer screams, "Fuck you!" And I say, "Hi, Mister Fuck You. How can I assist you today?" And they hang up. I have permission to do this. So eat dick. <laughs> Sir, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to email me what the name of that cell phone provider is because I want to get a plan with them. <laughs> right. Because that is a, a cell phone provider that is mildly smart <laughs> to just be like, sure, let it. <laughs> Instead they of trying to talk some asshole down. Right. 
Just say hi, Mr. Fuck You. How can I help you today? My name is Bag of Dicks. Well, Mr. Bag of Dicks, how can I help you today? Well, hi, my name is Never Sucking Yours. How can I help you, Mr. Bag of Dicks? God damn. Oh my God. All right. So I'll save the rest of these. Um one of our one of one of uh, my very good friends, um, he actually lives uh he's one of my neighbors. Oh, and he still lives there? Yeah. Oh. And um uh, He's he's a great guy. He cracks me up. He's a fucking giant. He is a giant. He's as big as a fucking refrigerator, and I'm not goddamn kidding you. I'm just going to call him Hagrid. Yeah. Because he is straight up Hagrid. He's, like, big, he's taller than a refrigerator. We're not even sitting here saying, like, oh, you know, he's super tall. Like, he is a... I mean, I have a pretty massive son. I have a pretty massive son. And my son next to this guy... Looks like a midget. He he does not look quite as massive as he is. And my mm-hmm. son is six foot three and weighs like 300 pounds. Yeah. Wears a size 15 triple E shoe. This, this guy... This dude is seven foot two. Two, yeah. That's how tall he is. And he's not skinny. He's not like and he like weighs 100 pounds. And like 400 pounds. Yeah, he's fucking huge. But the sweetest guy... <laughs> wait, wait. He is the biggest wait. sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> so when Uh-oh. I was <laughs> he's gonna be mad so <clears throat> it was no shave in November and we were all sitting back there and this was like after everybody had left and I was in charge of all the QAs right and uh-huh. he was one of my QAs right and it was no shave November and he had decided to stop shaving and he had a mustache <laughs> He looked like the biggest porn star in the Aww. fucking world. Like every time we saw him, we were like, bow, tick, bow, bow. Uh-huh. <laughs> we were like, "You, I'm so glad November's over because you look like you have a fucking <coughs> van parked outside. This has free candy. <laughs> you need to get that shit off your face <laughs> so goddamn fast. <laughs> you oh look crazy, but oh he is God. just the just he is super sweet now here's the thing my the my first experience with him and i will i'll tell this part of the story and then we'll talk about what it was he wanted us to talk about um sophia and i had just started in collections as their qas there's a lot of people in the collections department who were not happy about it because we came from customer service and we had no collections experience and collections didn't like anybody they didn't like me they didn't like Anybody that came, body from, the that came from the outside because at all. Because they felt like, why are these customer service people trying to tell us how to actually collect money? Collecting right. money is different than customer service. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, hated us. So we already were trying to like kind of figure out how to navigate these waters. Well, he had started, and it, he, it was like his, his training class had just gotten out. He was very new there. And we all had this big bowling event, mm-hmm. right? Just for the collections department. So we all go, and Sophia and I, were we were very much encouraged to go, like, hey, you know, socialize. Maybe they'll feel, like, a little bit more relaxed if they actually get to know you as people. Yeah. Right? Okay, fine. We fucked up. We fucked ho- up hard. Because, and here's why. They did one of those raffles where they were like, okay, whoever gets, you know, you know, gets X number of, you get a roll of tickets for something, yeah. and you pay five bucks for a roll of tickets, and then whoever, whoever's ticket is drawn wins. Uh-huh. Okay, fine. Life is grand. Well, they said it had to be the length of anyone's arms for holding their arms out from <sighs> finger to finger. So we see him, Hagrid, walking around, and Sophia goes, Let's grab him because it didn't it didn't have to be our arms, right? So Sophia walks up and is like, "Hey, we'll split it three ways." <laughs> so we get the longest fucking thing. Of t- probably has a wingspan of nine fucking feet. <laughs> And of course we fucking won. So when they announced our number, me, Sophia, are jumping up and down and stand there like, oh yeah. Because I mean, it literally was like a thousand dollars. We end up splitting this money and people are pissed. Oh, the sure. two new bitches that they don't like in the fucking first place. Like, oh my. And the giant and the just gi- won all the goddamn and money. The giant, nobody knows. Oh my God. It was so bad. So Hagrid, he he saw me out getting the mail, and he was like, "Hey, I just listened to the show. How's Tanya?" And I was telling him like, uh-huh. "Here's what's going on." 
But then he was like, you know what? I'm really surprised you guys have never talked about the weight loss contest. <laughs> and instantly it was like a flood of like, oh, shit. So hmm. that story was bonkers. So we had this girl that started with a couple of her friends. They all started around the same time. A um, couple of them were roommates. And the one girl was like, hey, let's do a contest where it's like, get fit. Like a biggest loser kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So basically, like, everybody, you know, came and every week you'd weigh in and whoever, by the end of it, like, you had to pay X number of dollars to get in. And any week you gained weight, you had to give money and stuff like that. Yeah. And then by the end, whoever lost the most weight got was the money. got the money, right? So this was not a contest issued by the site. This was a contest that this girl by herself was running. So she was kind of in charge of it. And nobody really saw a problem with that, right? Mm. Well, it really came down to Tanya and Hagrid because the two of you... Oh, we had lost the most weight, yeah. Like, you two went on, like, a fucking mission. And it was <laughs> obvious. By the time that ended, we were all like, damn, y'all, that weight just, like, melted off the two of you. And it was like a competition. Like, who's lower? Is it Hagrid or is it Tanya? Like, every week right. at weigh in. Coming there talking shit and everything else. Oh, you guys were having a grand old time with it. <laughs> so it was pretty much understood. Like, everybody pretty much got to a point where they understood. Yeah. Like, Okay, but I guess there was like a weird calculation that they were doing of like, it wasn't just weight, it was also BMI yeah. and all that stuff, whatever. Okay, fine. Well, a few days before the, the end of the, the contest, one of the, the, her little roommate girls quit. Nobody really thought anything about it. Life is grand. Well, all of a sudden, on the day that the winner announced, oh, you know who lost the most weight? My roommate yeah. just quit. yeah. And everybody was like, wait, what? what? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? And then she was like, um, and peace out. And she quit a few yeah. days later because everybody was so goddamn mad. Yeah. It was like, you straight up scam. Yeah. And there a was sight of people. Right. Because there was hundreds of dollars in there. Oh, yeah. People were pissed. Everybody was mad. Everybody was mad because they knew like Tanya or Hagrid should have won this. And we were all excited. Like, this has been going on for weeks of us seeing who's going to win. Yeah, and like every like every time we would go in there every week and just weigh in and everything. And me and group like, how much did you lose? How much did you lose? You know, we would, or me and I would always be, you know, trying to keep yeah. up with each other. How much did you lose? No, I lost this much. Oh, did you lose this? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It yeah. was like, it was fucked. You want to talk about a scam that nobody saw coming. There are times where yeah. some scams I've seen where I'm like, really? You couldn't figure that out? Like, come on. That never would have guessed, never would have guessed that that was the fucking scam yeah. that they ran. Yeah, it ain't that some amazing. shit? I mean, come on. And the next thing you know, we're getting fucking emails like, any contests I have to, to go through, issued, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Issued by management. Like, oh my God, that... Yeah. That fucking brought the hammer down. They yeah. were pissed. And then that girl's managers actually got in trouble because they were like, why didn't you tell her, like, we should be administering this right. to make sure it's fair since right. your friends are participating. Fucking nope. raggedy ass fucking people. I was fucked up. But, yeah. <laughs> so, Hagrid wanted us to tell that story. It was really messed up. I remember, like, whenever it was all of us back there. Because it was Carly, because she was gone all the time to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And so it was like me and, and six different analysts, you know. And yeah. so we would have like little potlucks and stuff. And <laughs> fucking Hagrid, always making a big ass crock pot full of some sort of soup and shit. Mm -hmm. Wow, he can cook his... Oh, yeah. yeah. He can cook. He can oh, yeah. cook. He was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make green chili today. And I'm I can't tell this. you the number of times we've gotten leftovers from him. Mm -hmm. like, he'll make a whole bunch of shit and... You know, all the guys and the roommates in the house next door, they're like, hey, you want it? I'm like, fuck yeah, I don't have to make dinner tonight. Sounds amazing. He's so awesome. He is awesome. He, he is awesome. Sweetie. I haven't seen him in so long. Oh, my God. Like, I have not seen him at all. Because I think the last time I saw him was like him getting into his car. Yeah. When I was leaving one day. He just got in a fucked up car accident. Did he? Is he okay? He's okay. It was just more like messed up. But what was so sad was one of his other roommates went to go get him. Uh-huh. Just to put in some context how big this guy is. When his roommate went to go get him, and he drives one of those 
big ass like SUV looking like Rubicon things. A Jeep? <clears throat> Kinda, yeah. yeah. I can't. I don't know what the make and model is of it, but it's a big ass like SUV type thing, like mm-hmm. off road thing. Hagrid couldn't fit in the car. I believe it. He's fucking huge. He's huge. He's and that big. He can't just fit in any kind of car. Uh, no, because he used to have that big gray car. Remember mm-hmm. that big ass gray car, and then he finally got himself a new car. Yep. And but that big ass gray car. I mean, that son of a bitch was. You mm-hmm. know. He was really. I can just see, like, if when he rolls up to a car dealership, them being like, oh, damn. Well, I mean, even with my son, like, him getting in my car, my Dodge, and it's, it's you know, it, sometimes, him driving it is a stretch sometimes. Yeah. You know, um, when I had my Sebring, there was no fucking way, even when I had my Journey. But for big guys like that, I. Uh, no, it's a challenge. It's got to be. Remember that big giant lady that was built like him? Yes. <laughs> we used to always say that was his girl. Oh, no. That was so sad. Tanya's like doubled over laughing. She's covering her mouth. She's turned away from the mic. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> she was a female version of... Oh, this is so mean. Oh, God. I know. It was tough. I'm going to hell. That's but, okay. All yeah. right. So we're going to wrap it up. We'll record <sighs> next time. Next time we record, hopefully, we'll just start doing the deep dives to just start knocking them out so we have them ready to go. for. And I'll save. I'll hold on to them until you start doing your reconstruction so yeah. that we have those. And I'm going to – maybe I'll try to read a book or two. Yeah. One of those ones. Um, totally. Just, um because and I'll give you you know what I'll do I'll actually give you my the login to my Audible account <laughs> and just go in and use my credits and shit because yeah. I have so many credits on that Audible account because like, um yeah because I have to go to the bookstore anyways because it's Christmas time and I have to mm. you know Sophie needs books so. oh yeah I just figured out Christmas for seventy five dollars for my entire extended family yesterday how the fuck would you bite them all an apple? Uh, what are you doing? No, nope. I went and got, I found the most amazing, soft as fuck, gorgeous um, yarn. And I'm just going to make them all scarves. Oh, well, fuck. Especially because yeah. some of the girls are now in college right now. Uh-huh. And they're all, the whole family is going to these college football games. So yeah. they had a color that is the school colors. Oh. So I was like, Six people, done. <laughs> okay, speaking of college, the other, oh, sorry. The other day I get a video from Avery. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. He's at a party. So where he goes, this junior college, is like right next to U of University of Arizona, I think. And um, it's like a, a resort they turned into dorms. It's super fucking nice. Mm-hmm. But there are these wild pigs that run around everywhere. I think they're called javelinos or something like that. I've never heard of this before. But he sent it to me on Snapchat, and I forgot to save it. But these fucking pigs are everywhere. Wild fucking pigs just roaming around his dorms all over the fucking place. Why does my son want to get a baby one and raise it as his own? He said... No, Avery. He said he wants to put it on a leash and take it for walks and bring it in the house. While you're in college. Yeah. But there's these fucking pigs... Just roaming around the goddamn dorms. All he said, they're everywhere. Shut the. He said that they are up. everywhere, and it's illegal to like kill them and everything. But I think they're called javelinas. Um, but they're these wild, wild fucking pigs that just roam around. Hold on. You I'm need just... to take a picture of my face right now because I am highly confused by the words that are coming out of your mouth. Hold on. Let me look. Let me look at his thing and see it, it was it's yep javelina pigs okay. right there yeah javelina it's called a peccary i don't know it's some sort a of a peccary fucking... is a medium-sized pig-like hoofed mammal in the blah 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 okay my god all right i'm gonna fall down a yeah. rabbit hole there yeah all right so 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 yeah so TJ. yeah <laughs> um yeah, he's got he's he's got wild pigs running all over the. Oh he'll be at a party. He's like he sent me a thing on Snapchat, a video, and he's like, "Look at this shit." <laughs> oh my him god! Him and his friends just cracking up, trying to chase the fucking pigs, the javelinas. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. All right. So, 
Send us your stories. We'll keep reading them. I'm going to try to get Carly and Johan on here. <gasps> yes. They really need to come and be. Tell me when they're going to do it, and I'll do it, as long as it's not on, like, a Wednesday. Okay. Well, Any other day, I'll probably look like death, but, you know, it's fine. All right. Until next time, I'm Laura Mack. And I'm Tanya Edwards. Love your face, dude. Smooches. Like what you hear? Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcasting platform. And follow us on our Facebook page by searching Q is in Cucumber. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram by searching Q-A-I-C underscore Lara, L-A-R-A, and Q-A-I-C underscore Tanya, T-A-N-Y-A. Don't forget to check out our other show, hosted by me and Jessica James, called The Parent Memoirs. And we want to hear from you. Share your stories by emailing us at Q is in Cucumber at yahoo.com. And you might just hear your stories on a future episode. Love your faces. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance.